Well, of course, we're still living with the curse of COVID, but uh, you know what? Uh, life still goes on, so there are other things out there to talk about. And what we want to talk about today is detox, all the various schemes that are out there. We're going to try to uh, elucidate what is really meant by the terms that are used and, and uh, whether or not there's any sense to this whole business. Well, first of all, I'm going to start off with some definitions about toxins. I mean, these are the kind of things that we worry about, but uh, very often the term doesn't get clarified properly. A toxin is any poisonous substance produced by bacteria, animals, or, or plants. So by definition, a toxin has to be produced by a living organism. Okay? So for example, the uh, poisons that are found in mushroom. This is the Amanita muscaria mushroom, and it produces a, a number of poisons. And so these would be toxins because they are naturally occurring. Similarly, the venom of the cobra would be a toxin because obviously it is produced by a living organism. On the other hand, a toxicant is any kind of substance that causes injury or illness or the death of a living organism. So it is not the same as a toxin. A toxin has to come from a natural source, a toxicant not necessarily. So for example, arsenic would be a toxicant, but it is not a toxin because it is not produced by a living organism. So the fact is that all toxins are in fact toxicants, but not all toxicants are toxins. And of course, what uh, we worry about are the toxicants, mostly. Uh, even though uh, snakes kill a lot of people, of course, uh, mosquito bites kill a lot of people. Malaria is the most prevalent disease in the world. Mosquitoes are the most dangerous creatures in, in the world. But that really is not what people think about when they think about uh, uh, toxicants. What we are concerned about are things like the PCBs these substances that were <clears throat> once used in insulators and have uh, leached into the environment, dioxins. Dioxins are never produced on purpose. Uh, they are the side products of a number of manufacturing processes, and indeed they are highly uh, toxic. Bisphenol A, for example, is a chemical that is used in the production of polycarbonate plastics and remnants of it can get into the environment, and uh, it has some endocrine disrupting properties, so it is, of course, of concern. And then we have things like methylmercury in the environment, concerned about eating fish, because uh, some fish, the large fish, the large predator fish, like sharks and swordfish, uh, have significant mercury content. So these are all toxicants. These are the kind of things that people are really concerned about. And the reason that there is concern is because they show up in our blood. When we do uh, uh, an analysis of uh, human blood, we find that there are hundreds and hundreds of different substances there. Most of them, of course, naturally occurring, but many not. Of course, this is all more or less a testimonial to the technology that was developed by analytical chemists. The fact that we can find substances uh, in the blood down to levels of parts per billion. But something that I've uh, emphasized many times in, in the past and uh, still do this regularly, make sure that you understand that just because something is there doesn't mean that it is doing some, something harmful. Uh, that is much more difficult to, to prove. But indeed, uh, when we do an analysis of blood, we find hundreds and hundreds of different compounds in there, all sorts. Most of them, of course, coming from the food that we eat, the water we drink, the air that we breathe, and of course, uh, some of the pollutants that we've, uh, we've talked about, and they do show up in, in the blood. The real question is, are they doing anything? Uh, obviously, it, it would be advantageous not to have these in the blood. That is, we want some process of detoxication, something that removes these chemicals from the body. <clears throat> well, as we will see, the body itself is actually quite adept at doing that. The kidneys, the liver are, are very, very good. So is the intestine at eliminating uh, foreign substances. Now, of course, there is the uh, notion that if you 
just sweat a lot, you're going to sweat out a lot of these toxins. This is just not the case. Uh, we can do a chemical analysis of sweat, and we do find that it contains salts that certainly contain sodium chloride. Any of you who have done long-term running know that once the sweat evaporates, it will leave salt behind on, on the skin. But the major purpose of sweating is, of course, to cool the body. Uh, there are no significant amounts of any sort of, of toxicants that show up in the sweat. Uh, this is not the way that the body gets rid of, of foreign substances. Those are eliminated through the kidneys and the liver. Nevertheless, um, it's a very seductive idea that you can sweat out toxins. And many sauna uh, manufacturers will, of course, uh, claim things like this, that, that you can sweat out toxins in your body. Whenever you hear something like that, the, the question to ask is really, uh, where is the evidence? What sort of toxins are you talking about? Can you give me a reference to some blood test that showed that you know after sweating, levels of chemicals are reduced in the in the blood? And of course, there's no such information that is is available. Uh, but there's plenty of of uh, anecdotal nonsense because that's what it amounts to, as you can see in this case, trying to quit smoking. Well, they tell you that if you just sweat, you'll sweat out some nicotine and that will reduce the chance of addiction. Uh, this doesn't make any scientific sense. And of course, there's no evidence for it at all. Uh, infrared saunas are becoming very popular. Now, of course, infrared radiation is just heat. So essentially all saunas uh, are infrared saunas because they all produce heat. Uh, but in most saunas, uh, the heat actually comes from rocks that are heated. And uh, so the air is heated. In an infrared, sa infrared sauna, the air is not heated. Uh, there's uh, some infrared emitter, and infrared emitter uh, uh, just infuses infrared radiation into, into the body, which heats the body on the inside without heating the air on the outside. And this supposedly is, is somehow better. Uh, there's no evidence for this. And of course, all the claims that are made about uh, infrared sauna, uh, one has to be very skeptical about, especially when it comes to detoxification, because there's no evidence at all that uh, the sweat that you produce in infrared sauna contains anything uh, that is being sucked out of the body. Now, to be fair, there is some evidence for the other claims. Uh, indeed, it is very possible to feel relaxed uh, after infrared sauna. It can uh, reduce blood pressure. It may offer some mild pain relief. The weight loss claim, that, that's nonsensical. You, the only thing that you lose is uh, the weight of water that you sweat out, which of course you will regain as soon as you drink some, some water. Uh, there is some evidence for circulation. It does increase circulation. Whether or not that has any meaningful effect is, is highly questionable. And it can reduce uh, joint stiffness as long as you're sitting in there. So there's nothing really harmful about the infrared sauna. But some of the claims, especially about detoxification, are, are uh, uh, exaggerated. There are a number of establishments where you can go and sit in an infrared sauna. And in fact, at the same time, Expose yourself to the supposed benefits of chromotherapy, different colored lights, which uh, have supposedly health benefits. Uh, this is not only implausible, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to, you know, that, that just sitting there, depending on what color light you're exposed to, uh, it is going to rid your body of certain illnesses. Nonsense. Of course, sitting there can be very relaxing. So there's nothing wrong with an infrared sauna, but there's plenty wrong with all of the claims that are being made on its behalf. Many of these claims refer you back to some native technology, because indeed North American natives uh, are known for having built these sweat lodges. And uh, they would crawl inside these contraptions, usually covered with animal skin. It's basically a tent and they would build a fire inside and they would sweat. Now this had no health connotation. These were religious uh, ceremonies and um, they have now been absconded by the, uh, you know, the health gurus, people like James Arthur Ray, who calls himself a health coach 
any time that you hear that expression, health coach, you have to to raise the red flag because it's really not a recognized uh, profession. But he's a public speaker, and uh, he tells people about how they can stay healthy, uh, offers some advice on, on diet, even offers some advice on how to become wealthy. And uh, he talks about sweating out toxins. Um, he's written a number of books. Uh, in this case, uh, it's uh, basically about becoming rich. So one of the ways you become rich is by coming up with the kind of schemes that he has come up with and selling it to people which is exactly what he did in Arizona. <clears throat> he built this gigantic sweat lodge and talked up the benefits of how this is going to remove toxins from the body. It's going to energize you. It, it uh, uh, gives you all kinds of, of health uh, benefits. And he had people paying hundreds of dollars to sit in here. Basically, to sit inside a torture chamber is what it amounted to. But for these three unfortunates, it was more than just a torture chamber because they actually lost their life. And this became a very, very hot issue. Uh, he was sued. Uh, and the um, state of Arizona uh, launched action against him, uh, basically for manslaughter. He was arrested. Uh, he was in jail uh, for two years. And uh, he is now out, and he's trying to resuscitate his career as a, as a health uh, guru. And he claims that uh, I, uh, it was improper following of his instructions that led to the death of those three people and how sorry he is, et cetera. But this whole concept of building these sweat lodges to remove toxins from the body is not uh, scientifically uh, sound. What is scientifically sound is the human body's mechanism of removing toxins. We know how this works. Detoxication is the term that is, is appropriate. And this is done mostly by the liver, the giant organ in the body, and the kidneys, and also the intestine. And as we said before, whatever comes out in sweat is really a, a trivial um, contribution. It's the liver that is the body's major detoxicating organ. <clears throat> and it does this by producing enzymes. Now, enzymes are, very, are special protein molecules, and they perform a number of jobs in the body. There are two kinds of enzymes that are involved in removing uh, toxicants from the body. We refer to them as phase one enzymes and phase two enzymes. And they work in slightly different ways. A phase one enzyme will render a molecule that's not very soluble in water more soluble because the best way to eliminate these substances is through the urine. Now, to eliminate something through the urine, you need to have it water soluble. So phase one enzymes will modify the molecular structure of a toxicant in such a way, usually by adding an oxygen atom to it in some fashion, that makes it more water soluble. Phase two enzymes work in a somewhat different way. They will attach a large water soluble moiety to the original molecule to kind of ferry it out of the body. They're not really important differences for our purpose here. The only thing to understand is that the liver is capable of producing these special enzymes that can eliminate substances from the body, either through the uh, urine or through fecal matter. <clears throat> and the enzymes that are the most important are the so-called cytochrome P450 family of enzymes. And these are the ones that uh, will eliminate foreign substances from the body the uh, toxicants that we, we talked about. Now, interestingly enough, the body, of course, will consider medications as foreign substances, as potentially harmful, as toxicants, and they are eliminated. <clears throat> so, for example, philodipine, which is an antihypertensive drug that is lowers blood pressure, is uh, metabolized in the body by the cytochrome P450 enzymes, and it's eliminated in, in the urine. <clears throat> Now, of course, uh, we know that drugs are metabolized and eliminated. That's why we have to keep taking them. This is the reason why you take a medication every day, or, or in the case of painkillers, let's say every four hours, because the body gets rid of this stuff. 
Well, this getting rid of the stuff can sometimes lead to uh, complications. For example, with the cytochrome P450 enzymes, these are the ones that in this particular case will remove philodipine from, from the body. Grapefruit juice inhibits the cytochrome P450 enzymes. So what is the consequence of this? If you are taking a medication like philodipine with grapefruit juice, the enzyme that would normally eliminate the drug is inhibited, which means that the drug builds up to greater than desirable levels in the body. And in the case of philodipine, it means that the blood pressure can drop too much, even to the extent that someone will faint. And this is why grapefruit juice is not the liquid with which to take philodipine. But when this first came uh, to light, uh, the MUHC, the McGill University Hospital um, uh, Center, decided to eliminate grapefruit juice, even though it doesn't affect every medication, but it was too complicated to determine which patients could drink grapefruit juice and which ones could not. <clears throat> so grapefruit juice was eliminated. It's not only philodipine uh, that is affected by grapefruit juice. Any medication or indeed any substance that is metabolized by the cytochrome P450 enzymes is affected. Because if you tie up those enzymes, then whatever they are supposed to be removing from the body is going to be left behind in the body in higher concentrations. But this um, cloud can in fact have a silver lining because it turns out that the chemicals in grapefruit juice that are responsible for blocking that, that enzyme are known as furanocoumarins. So it would be interesting if these then could be used in a, in a therapeutic fashion, uh, because if, if you have uh, something that is known to block enzymes, that of course can sometimes be used in a, in a beneficial way, because perhaps you can get away by, by uh, using um, uh, lower concentrations of, of certain uh, medications by incorporating the furanocoumarins into the uh, uh, medication so that it lasts longer in the bloodstream, right? If, if the enzyme that normally breaks down the drug is impaired, it means the drug will last longer in the bloodstream. <clears throat> it means that you can use a lower dose. So there may be something uh, to the furanocoumarins uh, being incorporated into medications in, in the future. Now, interestingly enough, these enzymes that are produced by the body to get rid of uh, intoxicants can be induced. What does that mean? <clears throat> well, inducing an enzyme means doing something to increase the concentration of these in the body so that they can perform the job better. An example would be drinking green tea. All tea will do this, but green tea uh, does it more. Because the mixture of chemicals that are found naturally occurring in green tea uh, will elevate the levels of the phase two enzyme known as transferase. Now that sounds like a mouth mouthful, that term. <clears throat> It just means that this enzyme attaches a molecule of glucuronic acid to the, intox to the toxicant, and that makes it water soluble and it can be eliminated from, from the body. So there are all kinds of studies on um, naturally occurring substances that increase the levels of these uh, <clears throat> enzymes. Another one uh, relates to broccoli. <clears throat> when you chew broccoli, you release a compound called sulforaphane. And this also stimulates the glutathione sulfur transferase uh, enzyme. And uh, in this particular case, uh, it increases the rate at which a molecule called glutathione, which is one of the body's natural uh, enzymes that, that gets rid of toxins, uh, this chemical increases uh, in the presence of uh, chewed broccoli, which releases the sulforaphane. And this is why we hear so much about broccoli being a, a healthy food, or that drinking green tea is, is healthy. It turns out that broccoli sprouts are even more effective at uh, <clears throat> releasing uh, these enzymes. And uh, you know, this just uh, buys into the uh, whole story that we've talked about so many times before, that a diet that has uh, a lot of fruit and vegetable content is a healthy diet. 
And one of the reasons is because there are compounds in these foods that induce the formation of these detoxicating enzymes. <clears throat> Garlic is another one. It also stimulates glutathione sulfur transferase. And uh, again, this enzyme just uh, attaches uh, uh, glutathione, uh, which is a natural occurring molecule, to the toxicant, and that allows it to be eliminated from, from the body. <clears throat> Garlic, of course, has a long history uh, of uh, medicinal use, much of it folkloric, but there actually is something to, uh, to this. And of course, we know that uh, the more garlic you eat, the less likely you are to encounter a vampire. In fact, the more garlic you eat, the less likely you are to encounter anyone at all, which may be very good in these days of COVID. If you eat garlic, you won't have any trouble keeping uh, the prescribed two meters away from uh, from a person. Now, sometimes the uh, the fact that these enzymes try to eliminate a foreign substance from the body can lead to an undesirable circumstance. <clears throat> barbecued food, for example. Let's look at this for a moment. Barbecued food tastes very good. Therefore, I'm sure suspicions are raised about it not being good for us because that kind of is the general rule of nutrition. The better something tastes, the less likely it is to be good for us. And indeed, uh, if you eat a lot of uh, barbecued foods, uh, <laughs> this slogan may just uh, come into play, barbecue to die for. And uh, there are several problems here. Of course, uh, a lot of barbecued stuff is very high in salt because of the barbecue sauce that it is put on it. But of greater concern uh, is the fact that the uh, charred parts contain compounds that are potentially carcinogenic. Now, here's the way this works. When you charcoal broil something, uh, you form these compounds uh, called aromatic hydrocarbons. <clears throat> this one here is called benzopyrene. Uh, this is the way that a chemist symbolizes it. It is just a shorthand way of referring to a molecule. Well, it turns out that this stuff is not very soluble in water. Uh, so it stays behind in tissues in the body, especially in the fatty tissues. The body then tries to eliminate it. And a phase one enzyme attaches an oxygen to this molecule, and that then makes it more water soluble because this oxygen is actually attracted to water molecules by something we call hydrogen bonds. Those of you who have some familiarity with chemistry will recognize the importance of hydrogen bonding in, in terms of making something, uh, uh, getting something into solution. However, there's a problem here. And that is that once this oxygen has been attached to this molecule, it makes this molecule very reactive. So reactive that it can actually react with DNA. And when it reacts with DNA, that means it's a carcinogen because it will uh, basically put a wrench into DNA. DNA, of course, is, is the uh, molecule in our in nuclei of our cells. Uh, that governs everything. It governs life, it governs the proteins that we make, and basically it's uh, the blueprint for life. That's the term that is used. And you don't want to muck about with DNA. And uh, when um, this um, uh, oxygenated hydrocarbon attaches to DNA, it basically breaks up the DNA chain and makes it incapable of reproducing the way that it should, and that can lead to carcinogenicity. So sometimes having these enzymes that are supposed to are supposed to rid our body of foreign substances uh, actually can have a negative um, effect. <clears throat> Detox is uh, financially very lucrative because people, of course, are worried about all kinds of toxins. Although what we should worry more about, as I said, are toxicants. It's not the naturally occurring toxins like snake venom that, that are such a, a big concern. It's uh, all of the other stuff that is uh, sort of a byproduct of 20th century life. And there are many, many detox methods that are being promoted to the public. Most of these, unfortunately, are total nonsense. There are supplements of all kinds, internal body cleanser, easy to use seven day program, specially designed to cleanse and revitalize the body. What does that mean, cleanse and revitalize the body? It means absolutely nothing. Uh, then you have uh, 
detox teas, again, cleansing and revitalizing. Uh, these are scientifically meaningless terms, but they sound very seductive. You have various kinds of kidney detox, liver detox, colon detox. These have no scientific merit whatsoever. Chinese herbal detox. For some reason, people think that the ancient Chinese were privy to secrets that, that we don't know about. And that if we just go back to using these ancient herbal remedies, we'll clean out our body. No evidence here whatsoever. Then you have absolute detox and pre-tox, and these are just marketing gimmicks. You even have detox for animals. Uh, interestingly enough, people will sometimes spend more on their pets than they will spend on, on themselves. A whole body detox and rejuvenating kit. Uh, again, these are marketing terms. They are scientifically meaningless. <clears throat> EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, is in fact not scientifically meaningless. This is a chemical that we refer to as a chelating agent, chelating agent. The term chelate comes from the Greek word meaning claw, because this molecule can kind of claw itself around metals like lead and mercury and remove it from the body, but not when it is given orally in a pill form like this or this is another version of the same thing, oral chelation therapy, as you can see, uh, reduces mercury levels, lead levels, and prevents you from stroke. First of all, mercury and lead do some very nasty things, but causing strokes is, is not one of these. But this is where they will take a smidgen of scientific information and blow it completely out of uh, uh, proportion. Hospital emergency rooms, in fact, do stock EDTA because if someone has legitimate mercury poisoning or lead poisoning, then this needs to be infused intravenously into their bloodstream to remove these metals from the blood. This is not done by taking an oral pill. It's not in the stomach that you have to tie up these uh, substances. It is in the bloodstream that they wreak havoc. So taking these pills orally is, is, is useless. What you have to do is infuse them uh, intravenously, and that can only be done under proper medical um, uh, conditions. But of course, you can kind of twist the words and you know, refer to the fact that this is used in hospitals for uh, detoxification, and therefore we should be taking these on, on a regular uh, basis. <clears throat> then there are gimmick devices. And this is one that I really like to take issue with because uh, it, play, it preys upon people's ignorance, but it does so in, in a very, very seductive fashion. What you're looking at here is a foot bath. And as you can see, it's got a wire coming out of it and that wire uh, is connected to an ele electrical plug. You plug this into the wall, you fill it with water, and then you put your feet into it. And look at the claims for this body detoxification technology. It's supposed to improve your circulation, reduce fatigue, reduce irritability, uh, reduce arthritic pain, improve kidney function, liver function. So they're making some very, very significant medical claims here. They're not saying that it's going to reduce the common cold from seven days to five days. They're making very serious um, claims here. Of course, none of these are true. But here is what happens. You sit there and you put your feet into it, you plug this thing into the wall, and you wait. And within a couple of minutes, this is what you see. And if you read the instructions or watch the videos, what they tell you is that these are the toxins that are being removed from your body. And they make all kinds of claims about this. Uh, they will tell you that the longer you sit there, the more toxins are removed. And they show you these pictures. Well, you can see sequentially the uh, water bath becoming darker and darker. According to the promoters, these are the toxins that are being removed. They give you these um, uh, tables explaining exactly what is being removed. 
If it is green, then it's coming from the kidneys and the bladder. If it's black, then it's detoxifying your liver, etc. But what is going on here? This is a total scam. The color that you see has nothing to do with toxins coming out of the body. The color is actually coming from electrodes in this foot bath, one of which is iron and the other one is aluminum. And when you plug this into the wall, what happens is you carry out a process called electrolysis, classic high school experiment where the water is broken down into hydrogen and, and, and uh, oxygen. Well, with the presence of oxygen near the iron electrode, the oxygen reacts with the iron and it forms iron oxide or rust. And what you are seeing is various concentrations of rust in this foot bath. Now, why do people form different colors? Well, contrary to what most people think, water is not a very good carrier of electricity. In fact, absolutely pure water, distilled water, will not carry electricity. You know, when you see in movies, someone in a bathtub and someone else comes along and throws an electric device like a radio or a fan in there and they become electrocuted, that is only because that water has a significant mineral content. We have calcium, magnesium naturally present in water that can carry electric current. So in the case of, of uh, uh, this gimmick here, the greater the ionic strength in the solution, the more color you will form. And that depends on how much someone is sweating because when you're sweating, you are releasing salt, sodium chloride, you're releasing some magnesium compounds, some calcium compounds. So different people will of course have different degrees of, of, of color and uh, has absolutely nothing to do with toxins being sucked out of your body. This is a, a total nonsense. But it's, uh, as you can see, it's very seductive nonsense. And of course, I've spoken to a lot of people who have spent the six, $700 for this device, and uh, they will tell you how much better they feel after they've seen the toxins sucked out of their body. What we're talking about there, of course, is the placebo effect. Uh, if you believe that toxins are coming out of your body, you will feel better. And uh, generally, the more money you spend on one of these things, the better you will feel uh, because you don't want to admit to yourself that you're not really feeling any, any better. <clears throat> Just as ridiculous are these detox foot pads that you can purchase in health food stores. It works while you sleep. Well, what, what is this? It's like a giant plaster, like a giant Band-Aid that you put on the bottom of your foot like this. And then you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning and this is what you see, the brown guck. And uh, this, of course, uh, is suggestions of toxins being leached out of the body. Again, this is not the case at all. What is happening here is just a discoloration of the stuff that is in this um, uh, bandage-like thing uh, as it reacts with sweat that comes out of your body. Now, here's what they tell you. They tell you that packed into this thing are natural health substances like wood vinegar, tourmaline, kyrosan, pearls, highly purified silica, and starch. And all of these things are mixed together you can see it has the effect of a natural force bath, promotes circulation of blood by generating negative ions, which is again scientifically meaningless. And supposedly it makes you feel refreshed and light. Uh, wood vinegar, which they have in here, is not actually a healthy substance at all. As you can see, we take a look at what wood vinegar actually is. It's a byproduct of charcoal production all kinds of nasty things in there. So I don't know why they have chosen wood vinegar. Well, actually, I do know why they chose wood vinegar, because this is the stuff that reacts with the sweat that comes out of your soul to form the dark uh, color. It's the uh, uh, various chemicals that are found in the vinegar that react with uh, minerals in sweat that cause the uh, discoloration. Uh, so this is, is just uh, pure nonsense. and. I love it when the nonsense promoters fight among themselves. Here are uh, three different such uh, things that you put on the bottom of your uh, foot, these pads, made by three different companies. And one of them is 
claiming that they are better than the others. Why? Because if you take some tincture of iodine and put it into the solution, it doesn't get dark, while the competitors do. Well, the only reason here is that they don't have any starch in the product. Iodine reacts with starch, that's how you get this dark color. Totally meaningless in this, this context here, but uh, it can be a very effective advertising and marketing uh, uh, gimmick. Then, of course, we have the various detox diets. And uh, these can be very interesting. Dr. Nish Joshi uh, lives in England and uh, very popular with his books. And uh, he tells you what to eat and what not to eat. His holistic detox diet, anytime that I see the word holistic, I already get kind of scared because I know that probably going to be followed by some silliness. Uh, you can change your life forever by uh, avoiding uh, acidic, toxic foods and making your body alkaline. Uh, this idea of making your body alkaline, again, has zero scientific merit. Uh, your blood is a buffered solution, meaning that it maintains its level of acidity, the pH, at about 7.35. Uh, and you're not going to change that by anything that you eat or anything that, that you drink. Uh, but again, this is uh, an idea that has been sold to the public that eating an alkaline diet is going to be somehow uh, beneficial. It's just that it makes no sense whatso uh, whatsoever. But they will tell you, Dr. Joshi tells you what foods to avoid and what to eat. <laughs> Interesting. No red meat, no dairy, uh, no fruit except for bananas. No wheat, gluten, no yeast, no alcohol, nuts, no potatoes, jams, no coffee, no sugar, no artificial flavors, etc. You can eat white meat like chicken and turkey, brown rice, uh, some cheeses, some yogurt, vegetables, eggs, etc. Uh, I would uh, agree that the diet that he recommends is a better diet than the one that we see on top here, the foods to avoid. I mean, that, those are the more the processed uh, foods. Uh, basically what he is saying to stay off away from dairy, there's no reason to stay away from dairy unless you have an allergy or you have lactose intolerance. Red meat, yeah, there's increasing evidence that red meat uh, uh, should be eaten only in, in uh, moderate amounts. Uh, I don't understand why he tells you to eat no fruits except for bananas. Uh, wheat, there's no reason to avoid beet, wheat unless you have um, uh, celiac disease or, or some other form of gluten intolerance. Uh, no processed foods, that's a good idea. Lots of these are, are very salty and high in sugar. Uh, no potatoes or tomatoes. This is this nonsense about um, avoiding the uh, uh, nightshade vegetables. Uh, both, both potatoes and tomatoes fall into that category, so do peppers. And uh, these contain a compound called solanine, and that's what these people fixate about, that this is a natural occurring toxin, not in the doses that you would normally eat. So there's no point in staying away from those. And eating yogurt and cottage cheese, certain fish, chicken, turkey, salads, gluten-free bread, yeah, I, I won't argue uh, against that. But to suggest that this is a means of removing toxicants from the body, again, is not scientifically based. Of course, you don't need scientific base to buy into this, as Princess Diana did and many others have as well. And uh, very often this, uh, this kind of thing uh, leads, to, leads to something we call orthorexia, which is just uh, an unhealthy focus on what you eat and paying too much attention to it and worrying too much and eliminating a lot of foods for uh, unscientific reasons. <clears throat> well, can such diets work? I mean, do they actually do anything to the body? Do they reduce levels of, of, of toxicants? A very popular British uh, television show called uh, Truth About Food did an in-depth examination of this. And they actually carried out a study. Uh, they selected uh, five young, uh, uh, healthy women. And uh, these ladies agreed uh, to go on a diet, no process food, no added salt, no added sugar, no tea or coffee, no wheat, no red meat, no dairy, no alcohol, no soft drinks, 
and organic produce wherever possible. And this is the kind of diet that is generally recommended by all of these uh, you know, uh, detoxifying uh, gurus. So they went on this for um, uh, several weeks. And after that, researchers measured many parameters like their kidney function, the uh, amount of creatinine secreted by the kidneys. They looked at liver enzymes. They looked at aluminum levels in, in the blood. They measured vitamin C, vitamin E. And uh, it turned out there was no difference with a control group of similar ladies, similar kind of lifestyle, socioeconomic status, who just ate a, a, a normal diet. Now again, this does not mean that there's anything wrong with the diet that we just discussed. In fact, there isn't. But it's the suggestion that this is going to remove these unnamed toxins from the body is what doesn't make any sense. Of course, there are many, many such diets. I mean, I just fixated there on Dr. Joshi's, but there's many. And uh, generally, these detox diets are not you know, unhealthy diets. As you can see, this one here features fish, features whole grains, whole grain pasta, lots of, uh, uh, lots of vegetables. So generally, it's fine. It just it doesn't detoxicate. <clears throat> but then you have the really nonsensical schemes, like this lemon cleanse, where you make a concoction of maple syrup, cayenne pepper, and lemon juice and drink this every day. The only thing that this will do is irritate your taste buds. Then there's this liver cleanse and gallbladder cleanse where you mix Epsom salt and olive oil and uh, vitamin C. And they tell you to take this on a daily basis because it will remove stones from your kidneys and stones from your liver. And they will even on videos and websites show you pictures. Well, of course, when you see these kind of pictures uh, on websites, you don't really know what you're seeing or where it came from. But if you, it really did come from someone who was uh, following the regimen that we just talked about, then what you're looking at here is probably crystallized uh, uh, magnesium sulfate, which is the Epsom salt. And you can't take huge doses of that. You might see some of it come out in, in, in this fashion. Because of this infatuation with what is happening in the, in the colon and that things should not stay around too long, uh, there's a whole movement uh, to cleanse the colon of toxins. Colon hydrotherapy is what it is called. And they have their own organizations. And the whole idea here is to somehow clean out the colon, which is judged to be uh, dirty. But this idea is not new. The uh, ancient Egyptians, for example, thought that if you were constipated, uh, this would lead to disease uh, uh, because the fecal matter would enter into the body, enter into, into the blood. Uh, so the idea of, of wanting to clean out the colon is, is, is not new. And then Eli Mechnikov in the late 1800s, the, the famous uh, Bulgarian uh, scientist, uh, he focused in on the intestine, and he, he studied exactly what is going on there. And he, in, in fact, suggested that, that uh, uh, if bacteria are not properly processing some of the remnants in our intestine, that can lead to ill health. And he was the first one to promote the idea that yogurt will rebalance the bacteria in, in, in the colon. So the idea of... of, of the colon somehow being involved in toxicity is, is not a, a new idea. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg was one of Mechnikov's disciples, and he was a properly trained physician who ran a, a sanitarium in Battle Creek, Michigan. And what an interesting place this was. Uh, this is where people came to be cured of diseases that they never had, mostly of, of uh, what Dr. Kellogg always diagnosed as auto-intoxication, which is basically constipation. This was his, his uh, pet disease. Everyone who had any kind of problem was because you know, they were, uh, their colon was somehow impacted in, in, in some way. And uh, he designed a number of foods that were supposed to eliminate substances from the colon. In fact, his original corn flakes and wheat flakes were designed for that purpose. Uh, they were supposed to uh, be healthy for the colon. And actually, there's some truth to that because some of these were very high in fiber. And of course, fiber does uh, allow substances to pass through the colon uh, very, very quickly. Kellogg was you know, quite an interesting character. He performed surgeries 
to remove parts of people's colon because he said that if you have a shorter colon, there's less place for fecal matter to stay behind and to cause disease. Uh, this, of course, again, has no scientific basis. Uh, he just removed healthy parts of people's colon. And uh, it's amazing that, that he actually had uh, patients who were willing to undergo this, uh, this procedure. This was another procedure that Kellogg recommended. <clears throat> what you're looking at here is his enema machine because he maintained that if uh, you had any kind of fecal matter left over in your colon, it had to be rinsed out and that would make you healthy. So you would sit and have a tube from this contraption inserted into the rectum, but this was not a water flush. What would be put into this device was yogurt and it would wash out your insides with yogurt. And you know what? This is not quite as crazy as it sounds because the live yogurt actually has bacteria in it, which could possibly help to recolonize a, a, a sick colon. So it's interesting that, you know, most, much, most of this was nonsense, but not, not all. Well, anyway, around the turn of the 20th century, uh, doctors, uh, you know, were very focused on this uh, auto-intoxication uh, idea. But eventually they had to abandon it because it was uh, demonstrated clearly uh, in the early years of the uh, 20th century that, that uh, remnants of fecal matter did not get absorbed into the, uh, into the blood and, and that uh, there was no need to, to go all out and you know, constantly flush out the, uh, the colon. But today, uh, the message is still there that so many diseases are due to fecal matter being left behind in the colon. And there are websites, there are books that tell you that a congested colon can kill you and that you have to get all remnants out. Then they tell you stories about how John Wayne, when he died and was autopsied, uh, that there were huge amounts of, of fecal matter left behind in his colon. They tell you the same stories about Elvis. Neither of these is true, but they make it sound very, very good. I mean, these people are very good at sort of pseudo-scientific writing. No, neither John Wayne nor, nor Elvis Presley died from fecal matter being impacted in their colon. <clears throat> but the hydrotherapists uh, charge a lot of money for flushing out your colon. So you go to one of these, this is the kind of bed you, you lie down, and then they hook you up to this machine. And essentially what it does is circulate uh, warm water through the colon, and you can actually see fecal matter come out. Uh, but just because there's fecal matter in the colon doesn't mean that it's doing anything. That's where fecal matter is. And uh, uh, in very rare cases, of course, you, you can have uh, fecal matter stay behind in the colon, these little pockets called diverticuli, uh, so diverticulitis is when you get inflammation of the diverticuli. But uh, in a healthy person, this is a total non-issue. You don't have to keep cleansing out your colon. It can be a dangerous thing. Uh, as you see here, uh, in one case, the attorney general had to take issue with this because uh, there were cases of uh, perforated colons because you don't need to have any kind of medical training to do this. Uh, people set up shop as colon cleansers. You buy the machine and you can get your clients and just uh, wash out their colon, but it's not risk-free. <clears throat> the same idea uh, is with these so-called metabolic detox pills, pills that you take, which basically evacuate you. They induce diarrhea. That's what these things do. And uh, again, the naturopaths and the promoters of this, you know, clean your intestine all the, all the time uh, notion tell you that you should be going to the loo three times a day. And if you're not, then you better stock up on these metabolic pills as they call them. Well, these usually are extracts of plants like cascara uh, or cassia, which uh, contain compounds called senocides. And these senocides are natural laxatives. In cases where people have constipation, and sometimes, of course, you have constipation for legitimate reasons, people do get sometimes constipated, then a laxative uh, can let things loose. Uh, 
But to take these on a regular basis is certainly not a smart thing to do. And again, the notion that this is the way that toxins are removed from the body is just not correct. They will also tell you that when you take these, what amounts to laxatives, you're removing parasites from your body. And these parasites supposedly cause every possible ailment. And uh, there are all kinds of products that they will sell. What all of these have in common is that they are basically laxatives. So you can see here uh, a lot of fiber in here from flax, psyllium, which is a natural uh, laxative, and uh, senna leaves. So when you take these, uh, you will see things coming out, that's for sure. And then they even show you pictures like this, that, that you, know, you take these um, pills and it will remove all of this matter from the colon. Now, I have no idea what they are showing you on these websites. I don't know what this is. This could be a necklace dipped in some kind of mud, who knows? Uh, but this is not something that is going to come out of your rectum when you, when you take those pills, but that's the insinuation here. Laxative should only be taken when you're advised by a physician that there's a constipation problem. This is not something that should be taken on a, a regular basis to quote, rid the body of toxicants. Well, finally, another age old supposed method to remove toxins from the body, and this is known as cupping, cupping. And here's the way that this works. They will take a glass jar and uh, usually uh, heat it up with a candle or with a match so that the air inside the jar becomes hot. And then they quickly clamp this down on your uh, skin. When the hot air condenses, it cools down, the pressure is reduced and there's a vacuum effect and that will suck the skin up into the uh, glass jar. And the idea is, that you're actually sucking the toxins out of your body. No, you're not doing anything like that. You're not sucking anything out of the body. All you're doing is just elevating the skin. You're just sucking some of the skin up into this jar. And when you take the jar off, this is what you're left with. You're left with a lot of marks on your skin. And uh, people do this because they think that, that it makes them healthier, removes toxins from the body. Gwyneth Paltrow is one of these. Well, of course, if Gwyneth does it, that's enough of a reason to know that it doesn't work uh, because she uh, promotes so much nonsense. And here was Gwyneth. Uh, actually, this was at the uh, Academy, Academy Award uh, uh, meeting or, or uh, uh, celebration. And she went there after cupping and you can see on her skin the, the remnants. So this whole idea of removing toxins from the body, this detoxication by taking colonics, by taking pills of all kinds, uh, this makes no scientific sense at all. What does make sense is if you want to gravitate toward a healthy life, if you want your body to work well, to be able to exercise its natural detoxicating methods, what you want to do is pay attention to the diet. Eat lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. The cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, these are good. Tomatoes, all kinds of nutrients. Forget this idea that it's a, it's a nightshade vegetable and therefore should not be consumed. The more different colors we eat, the more substances we have that the body can actually use. More different colored fruits we eat, the better. And... Uh, if you eat whole grain cereals in the morning, dress it up with some berries. This is the way you give your body the tools it needs to form those enzymes that will naturally remove foreign substances. And of course, you do want to make sure that you're not eating all of the garbage uh, out there, all of the processed foods, foods that are high in sugar, the foods that are high in salt, the foods that have very little fiber. This is what a healthy diet is, is all about. It's, reducing these and maximizing the ones that I just uh, showed you. But there's something else, of course, that you can and should do. We can't put it into a bottle and that is exercise. We have a great deal of evidence that exercise also increases the levels of those detoxicating enzymes. So eating a healthy diet, exercising is the way to go. 
uh, not all of these dietary uh, detoxification schemes that uh, I've talked about. Uh, there's lots of interesting stuff on our website, uh, of course, not only about this, but uh, about uh, all aspects of diet, medications, cosmetics. So you go to mcgill.ca slash OSS. And uh, every Thursday, uh, we also do an online presentation, uh, a live stream uh, event with some colleagues of mine and special guests. And there we talk COVID because unfortunately there's still a lot of COVID stuff to talk about. And if you wanna know exactly when that happens, you can just go to my personal Facebook page uh, and uh, you can find that easy enough under my name and we'll, we'll have it there. It's, it's a, this coming uh, Thursday, it will be at five o'clock uh, Eastern time. Anyway, you can go to my Facebook page and I'll have the details there. So that's it, we have run out of time. I don't know if we have uh, time for um, a couple of questions here. Uh, I don't actually see the questions. If you have a question for Dr. Joe, and if you're uh, watching us on Zoom, you can either uh, press the raise hand button and you can ask your question live, or you can uh, type in your question if you prefer to do it that way. Dr. Joe, while we're waiting, I just have a question. Um, it seems like it's a never ending battle against sort of the bunk that you're constantly debunking. And your group obviously is is talking about this and and sharing information, but it's it's obviously it's a much larger issue. So, who should be doing more in in our society? Is it governments? Is it schools? And um and and what could really move the needle? Well, they're they're all trying. I mean, governments are trying, of course, to to pass on reputable information. <clears throat> but the fact is that the the quacks are extremely good at what they do. And they can make their nonsense sound very, very scientific, you know, and uh, people are looking for simple solutions. The real problem is that in realistic science, we don't have simple solutions. I can't tell you, you know, that taking that detox pill is going to cure everything. But the scam artists do tell you that. And that's why they can seduce uh, so many people. Uh, the government institutions are giving out good information. CDC in the in the U.S. gives out very very good information, but of course it's not as seductive as all of the uh, nonsense. People have to learn to be highly skeptical. And you know the old adage: if it sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true, because there are no simple solutions to these you know health problems in in, in life. We all wish that there were, but they're not. But again, you know, sometimes there are kernels of truth, you know, when uh, we, we talk about eating a lot of high fiber foods in order to make sure that that stuff flows through the colon rapidly, that that's, you know, there's some scientific merit uh, to that. But that doesn't mean that we should go to you know, a colon therapist and flush our insides with hot water. Uh, Dr. Joe, did you have any other uh, closing remarks you wanted to make? Not really, uh, except uh, again to suggest that we have all kinds of stuff on, you know, on our website. And if anyone wants to sign up for our uh, weekly newsletter, which of course is free, it comes to you every Saturday with a collage of entertaining information. Uh, you go to the website that you're looking at here and you can sign up for, uh, for free. And I guess we will do this uh, library lecture again next month.